so Shane, um, can you, uh, in, I don't know, 10,000 words or less, describe what this experience is like teaching your players versus sitting in the same room with them? Yeah. You know, the, obviously the human interaction is huge, you know, to be right next to each other. Um, but in this new world right now that we're living in, you can, you can get done uh, on these Zoom calls what you could in a meeting. I mean, you have the capability to show your film, show the playbook, and go through that. So that part, from the classroom standpoint, you can get done what you need to get done uh, from a teaching uh, purpose. Obviously, the thing you lose out on, you know, is there's no off-season and getting guys on the grass. You know, that's, that's the big thing is getting timing down of routes and blocking schemes and all that. But from a, from a meeting standpoint, you know, you can get done what you need to get done. Um, you're just obviously not, you know, there with the players. All right. Uh, next up, Jeff Miller. Hey, Shane. Uh, this is the, the first chance we've uh, had to talk to you since you became the official offensive coordinator. Can you just uh, talk about this opportunity a little bit and what it, what it meant to you to get uh, to have the interim tag removed? Yeah, uh, it, it's an exciting time. Uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. You know, obviously, uh, I think everyone, you know, when you're a younger coach, you know, you grow up wanting to be an offensive coordinator and at some point, you know, be a head coach. Um, but to get the opportunity to do it, um, I'm excited. Uh, it's been good having staff meetings with the offense, um, you know, putting things in and talking through things. But I'm excited for the opportunity. And, and Shane, did you uh, – how confident were you at the end of last season that this was going to happen? I don't know how the conversation went. It, it seemed like Anthony was always, you know, it was always very complimentary, at least uh, to us. And it, it wasn't very – it wasn't real surprising to us. But – just can you sort of take us through the process at the end of the season last year? Yeah, at the end of the season, he brought me in and said, hey, I, you know, I, I liked what you did. Uh, you know, he said, you know, he was in my shoes at, in Buffalo that one year and said, I know it's hard. I've been in those shoes and I thought you did a heck of a job, um, you know, with what you had to do uh, with the last eight games. And uh, I want you back uh, to do it again next year. And I said, absolutely. So it's kind of how that all went down. All right. Next up, Fernando Ramirez. Hey Shane, congratulations. Uh, hey, thanks. What was what went into Justin Herbert, and what did you like about him uh, when you scouted him and got to talk to him, maybe on the Zoom calls? Um, you know, he's a big, big, strong uh, guy, um, and he's very athletic for his size. And the things he did for his size on tape on tape are uh, are rare. Um, you know, he's able to shed tackles in the pocket, but also get out and extend plays. Um, and he's a winner. Um, he's a competitor. You know, he's got all the intangibles. He's tough. He's smart. He's got all those things. And then he's got a heck of an arm. You know, you see some of the throws he made in college. Um, they're big time NFL throws. And uh, we're excited to get him in the building when that, whenever that happens. And uh, looking forward to working with him. Uh, Daniel Popper, you're up next. Hey, Shane. Uh, hey. Obviously, first off season full-time offensive coordinator and you've obviously had an opportunity now to sort of mold the offense in your image whereas last season you probably didn't have as much of an opportunity to do that sort of how has that process been and how far along in that process are you right now uh we're pretty far along you know we, we obviously we were in the building for a while there uh putting it all together and doing what we need to do and then obviously it broke i don't know when we left the building i think it was sometime in march into march or something um but we've been going through the zoom calls um, it's been good. Like I said, I'm excited about it. Um, staff's been good, and we're just working through it. Is it so? Is the offense fully put together at this point, or is there some more room to to yeah. implement stuff? Or yeah, there's definitely more room to implement stuff. I mean, depending on how much time we have, you know, the hard thing is, you know, if you you put in some new things and stuff, it's new, and you can talk about it on Zoom call, but you got to go out and practice it, you know. So that's the thing. Uh, that'll be the. Uh, deal especially I mean for us and then even new staffs you know new coaching staffs around the league you know that, that's going to be the thing is we're putting in a new system but you got to go rep it and do something and and there'll be some similarities of what we've done and and there's going to be some wrinkles too yeah just to follow up on that Tom and Anthony have both said there's going to be some some 
you know, obviously new stuff in the scheme, some more quarterback movement, more play action, zone read kind of stuff. How exciting is it to sort of implement some stuff that you guys maybe haven't been able to do in years past with, with a different type of quarterback? Yeah, like you said, just exactly what you said. It'll be exciting, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks. Yep, you got it. Omar Ruiz. Hey, Shane. Good to see you, man. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you. Good. Uh, just wondering, once you're allowed to get kind of, you know, the Zoom calls going with the rookies and, and specifically Justin, if you're allowed to have one-on-one -on -one time with him to kind of, you know, full, fully <clears throat> uh, go over the playbook and everything like that, and then kind of the follow-up to that would be what uh, specific objective, objectives might you have here during this, you know, virtual offseason for him? Well, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, a lot of these guys – especially the college quarterbacks, you know, they don't huddle a lot. I mean, the big thing is getting in a huddle and calling a play. Um, obviously, we like to go over our basic information, our formations, and how we do certain things, how we call cadence. I mean, there's a lot of nuances that go in before you start teaching actual plays and system. I mean, it's, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that needs to go forth, how we call defensive structures. You know, it's all new language. Um, so that's all going to be new. And that's, that's the big part, learn the language first you know, before we get into uh, the schematics of everything. And will you be able to kind of get that one-on-one -on -one interaction with him or everything will be group setting? Yeah, no, we have, we have, we'll have individual meetings okay. um, with those guys and go, go from there. Thanks, man. You got it. Joe Reedy, you're up. Hey, Shane, just what's it been like uh, working with James Campen so far? And as far as offensive line, what kind of, um, scheme changes do you envision at this point yeah James has been great um James had a lot of success in this league you know he was with Green Bay for all those years um they had a good good running attack there obviously he was part of the Super Bowl win there with them and then obviously in Cleveland um he brings a great uh, deal to our room um you know Pat did a heck of a job as well our former line coach but He's going to be a, a good good addition to our staff. Uh, the short time, obviously, that he's been here for the last couple months. Um, he's a very detailed guy in everything he does. He's always got answers for things, and uh, we're excited to have him. And then just following up, when Anthony named you to the permanent post, uh, quarterback coach wasn't named. Are you going to double as QB coach, or are you close to naming one? Yeah, uh, I think that'll take care of itself in the near future. Uh, you know, we'll, we might, we'll probably add a guy in the near future. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Sandoval, you're up. Hey, Shane. First of all, congratulations on the uh, elevated position. Thanks. Um, when there, there's a lot of history of uh, young quarterbacks coming in and playing right away, there's also a lot of really good history, Aaron Rodgers learning from a veteran for a couple years. Um, with Tyrod Taylor kind of being the incumbent and knowing the system, what would Justin have to do in – what could be a shortened preseason, shortened season, ever? What would he have to do to show you he's he's the guy? Well, I think I mean there's there's going to be a whole different. I mean, it's a different world, you know. We don't have the off season with these guys to go see him on the grass, and depending on how this whole thing plays out, you know, I think with any rookie, no matter what position it is, it's going to be tough to get those guys on the grass early uh, in games because it's a whole different deal, you know, the speed of the game and stuff, just getting in the huddle. Um, but, you know, they're going to compete, you know, and, and we'll see how it all plays out. And like I said, Tyrod's our guy right now, and, and, and Justin's going to learn. And obviously we got Easton Stick as well, who's a heck of a competitor. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. We're excited about the three guys we got, and we'll go from there. Hey, Shane, just a quick follow-up. On, on draft day, uh, Justin talked about he had missed this question during the process, and it really bothered him. We know he's the academic Heisman winner you had mentioned. He's really smart. From your perspective, how does his IQ elevate compared to other quarterbacks? What is jumping out about his IQ? Just his, just his ability to retain information. You know, there's, there, you can retain information. And then the thing is, obviously, when you get these guys in the building, you can retain it and you can talk about it in a classroom setting. But I think the thing that separates the good from the great is how they can process it on the field. You know, when you get in a game situation, it's like, yeah, I know what to do. I see the looks, but how you got, you got, you know, two and a half seconds to process 11 guys on defense moving around to make the right decision. And that's, that's going to be, uh, 
when we get him on the grass and we get these guys back in the building, that'll be the big thing because we know he, mentally he can do it. Is he going to uh, process it quickly on the field um, when he gets here? Uh, but we're excited about uh, what he brings. Thanks, Shane. Yep. Jason Hershorn. Hey, Shane. Uh, hey, I, doing, I'm man? curious. I'm, I'm, well, as well as we can under the circumstances. Yeah. I, I'm curious. What is it like designing an offense during an offseason when, at least until the, this past week, you didn't know all of the quarterbacks and, and some of the pieces that you would be building around? Like, what, what are the challenges involved with that process? Like, you know, given all those unknowns for you and the staff during the offseason? Um, I, I don't know if it's been a challenge as much as it's been fun. It's been fun, you know, doing certain things, uh, putting in certain things and all that. And like I said, it just goes back to, yeah, we, we're putting it on, but we got to rep it, you know. Um, we gotta, we got to get, get these guys on the grass and, and, and rep the plays and uh, go from there. And then as a follow-up, in talking with, with Anthony, he made it sound like there's going to be more, or at least he'd ideally like the offense to involve more under center, more play action. How do you mold those concepts with some of the stuff that uh, Justin Herbert did at Oregon? Because as Anthony mentioned as well, like he wants to have some pistol in there because it's what he's familiar with. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you want to build some things around what your quarterbacks do. You know, what, what your quarterbacks do, let's, let's work to their strengths and uh, build off that. And it's same with all, all positions, you know, you want, you want to put your guys in position to uh, be successful, you know, put your receivers in position, good matchups there, tight ends, running backs, whatever it is. And obviously it starts with the quarterback. Uh, Tom Krasovic. Shane, going back to Phillip, uh, how much control did he have at the line of scrimmage? And did that make your job easier? And, and going with Tyrod, how different will it be for him? Yeah, I mean, Philip was a great player. And, and as you guys knew over the years that he's been in the NFL, um, you know, he, he did have a lot of control at the line of scrimmage. Um, and Tyrod, he's, he's a vet now. He started a lot of games. And, uh, you know, he can, he can have some of that same capability uh, that Philip did. So I'm excited, uh, like I said, to work with Tyrod. Um, He's a, he's a good player, uh, and like I said, he's been to a Pro Bowl, um, had a lot of success in this league. And if I could follow up with Justin, would you think about doing like what McVay did with uh, Jared Goff, where he would stand on the sideline and wait and wait and look at the defense and then coach him until the uh, headset went off? Yeah, with anything. I mean, you got to be you got to be very detailed in the meetings with them, you know, and give them the stuff that most important stuff that he needs to know because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that goes into a system, but give them give them the basics and the main the most important stuff that he needs to know to have success early. Uh, Dennis Freeman, you're up. Hi Shane, how are you? Good. How you doing? Hello. Yeah, I'm great. Um, can you tell me what lost you? You like about Joe and KJ players uh, hit the field immediately. You froze, you, you froze you, up you on us. Yeah, all right. You said talk about Joe and KJ. There you go. Did you say Joe and KJ? Is that what he said? Yeah. Yeah. Joe, Joe's a, Joe's a really good player. You know, he's a dynamic player, wide receiver, kick returner. You know, punt returner, all that stuff, you know, that he brings uh, a good element um, that we can use him in some different ways. And then you look at KJ in the slot, you know, he's, he's a very crafty route runner. You know, you can get matchups inside with him on linebackers. Um, certain things are on option routes. And, I mean, he was the all-time leading receiver in Ohio State history, and that says a lot uh, for a young man. So uh, we're excited about those two guys. And then Joshua Kelly, the running back from UCLA, you know, he's a powerful runner. We're excited about him. You know, he can stick his foot in the ground and really go. So excited about those guys. Um, I think they're going to help us out uh, this upcoming season. Uh, Pablo, I'll see you now. You're up. Un un unmute yourself, Pablo. Shane, Pablo Alcina here with Fox 11. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Congratulations on the new job. Thank you're you. a young man, you're 35. Do you think that helps you relate with a rookie quarterback like Justin Herbert better, or, or does it make a difference? Yeah, I mean, I think it helps. I mean, you can relate a little better. Um, but you know, like I said, I mean, I think no matter what your age is, older or younger, as long as you can get the information to these players, 
um, and teach it uh, in, a, in a very cons uh, you know, good way uh, to get them to learn it. Um, I don't think it matters the age. Something that also helps quarterbacks is having people to throw to, and you have some of the best in Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry. Hopefully he can play a full season. Talk about what steps you want to see from a player like Mike Williams. I think he has so much talent. Where do you see him taking his talent this season? I just think just uh, he's continuing to improve as a route runner. You know, Keenan's one of the best route runners in the league, and, and, and Mike being around Keenan so much and our, co our, our wide receiver coach Phil helping him on the route details, uh, you know, on sticking his foot in the ground and sinking his hips on certain routes because – Obviously, he's a bigger wide out. You know what I mean? He doesn't have this, uh, the craftiness that Keenan does in the slot. But for a big man to be able to sink his hips and come in on those in cuts and break on those out cuts and continue to work on the details of his route running um, is going to be huge for him this year. Final one for me, Austin Eckler, do you see him as being the feature back or is the plan to bring in, like to have Joshua Kelly or another running back be the one and have Eckler keep playing that same role he was playing in the past? Yeah, I think I think all three of those guys, all three of those guys are going to share the load. You know, I mean, they're they're all they all bring something unique. Um, so we're excited about all three of them. Thank you, Shane. Uh, Chris Harry. Hey, Shane. At, at this time last year, we were talking a lot about Easton Stick and um, North Dakota State's head coach talked about how he's the most intelligent guy he's ever been around. How has he progressed from year one to year two, and, and how will he add to the dynamic of the quarterback's room, especially with a young guy like Justin in there? Yeah, yeah, he's a uh, very, like you said, he's very intelligent. Um, and over the year, just even stuff that we've been talking about in meetings the last couple of weeks that happened, you know, early on in, in last season, like he still retains that information, uh, which is very impressive. Um, so he'll be good. He, he's good for the, he's good, a good player. Uh, very intelligent. I'm excited about him. Excited about all three of these guys. Uh, next, Joe Reedy. Shane, just with Anthony working with Tyrod in, in Buffalo back in 2016 as his OC, how much, feed, how much interaction have you had with Anthony about what worked, what didn't as far as that offense? Yeah, we've had a good amount. Good amount. He's what, and he he knows Tyrod. Obviously, he was with him as his coordinator and been around him. Um, so yeah, we've had good conversations about uh, those certain things. And then, just as a follow up, um, how do you assess your left tackle situation right now? Right now, I mean, we got we got guys on the roster that play. You know, Sam Tevy's been tackled. Trey Pipkins has experience. You know, Trent Scott played out there. You know, Forrest Lamb was a tackle in college. So we got guys over there uh, that are going to compete. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Kurt Sandoval, back to you. So, Shane, could you speak to Josh Kelly? And you know, all three running backs are different. What was it about him that you like? What ingredients does he bring your offense? Like, he's a big, powerful guy that can really explode through the hole, you know. Um, I got a chance to talk to him, obviously, on the phone. And just he's, he's a, such a genuine person, too, not only on the football field, but off. Just, I just had a brief conversation with him. But he was so grateful for the opportunity. Uh, tremendous person, uh, first and foremost. Um, and then from his ability standpoint, I mean, you look at the road he took from going to UC Davis and then, you know, uh, going to UCLA and, the way he did, I mean, that just that shows a lot to who he is as a person and his character. Um, but from his ability on the field, the way he made plays and been, up, been able to cut and hit those holes and, and shed tackles um, is a big thing that we liked about him. Uh, Kraz, you're back up. I don't believe uh, Justin Herbert did anything under center at Oregon in games. How much do you do in practice? And is that something you can work with him, uh, I don't know, over Zoom or uh, give him instructions or uh, have him do it on his own? Yeah, I mean, you could stand up and give an example, you know, <laughs> of how to, how, to, how to drop and be under center and all that stuff. But, uh yeah, I mean, you, you want to work to the quarterback strengths, and most of these guys haven't been under center, you know? So, there'll be, we'll be some under center. We'll be some shotgun. I mean, we'll be a little bit of everything. So, 